Josephine Okereke, the wife of the newspaper vendor, shot and killed by a DSS operative attached to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Badabiamila, has revealed that she is not in support of the 500 million naira compensation her husband's family is demanding from the Speaker. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, gunmen kidnapped three commuters in Abuja on Wednesday. The Federal Capital Territory Police Command thwarted the attempted abduction of 19 persons along Kwali Axis by the gunmen. According to a statement on Thursday by the command spokesperson, ASP Mariam Yusu, the rescue of the 19 persons were conducted by a joint team of police operatives from the command who responded promptly to the occasion and engaged the heavily armed hoodlums in a fierce gun duel. The force said it was making efforts to rescue the three victims in custody of the gunmen who escaped into the forest on Wednesday. Recall that over 12 persons have been reportedly kidnapped in Kuje and Kwali axis of the FCT in the past three weeks. At number 9, the senator representing Adamawa North, Elisha Agbo, who was fined 50 million naira in September for assaulting a lady in a sex toy shop in Abuja, has explained his reasons for defecting from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. He said he joined the PDP in order to pursue his 2023 governorship ambition in Adamawa State. Abu, whose letter of defection was read by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan on Wednesday, said at a news conference after plenary that there is a major crisis in Adamawa State and that he was not ready to resign as a senator as the PDP demanded. At number 8, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, has said that the Coalition Alliance Against COVID-19 will rebuild all the 44 police stations that were damaged in the country as a result of the wanton destruction and looting that followed the NSAS protests. Mefele revealed this during a press briefing in Lagos on Wednesday at the office of the CBN. The central bank governor said CarCovid has also pledged to provide over 100 billion naira for procurement of equipment and gadgets for the Nigerian police force over the next two years. At number seven, Interpol has apprehended three Nigerians for alleged involvement in a cyber scam targeting governments and private firms in over 150 countries. They were allegedly part of a criminal organization that compromised thousands of governments and private companies across the world. According to a statement published on the Interpol website on Wednesday, the arrest was carried out by a joint operation of the Interpol, a cyber security company, Group IB and the Nigeria Police Force Tag Operation Falcon. Interpol said the gang focused on mass phishing links, domains and mass mailing campaigns in which they impersonated representatives of organizations. At number six, the governor of River State, Nyeso Mwike, has said President Muhammad Buhari will set Nigeria on fire if he does not implement some of the demands from leaders of the six geopolitical zones during the recent discussions with the presidential delegation led by the chief of staff to the president, Ibrahim Gambari. Gambari presided over meetings with ministers, federal lawmakers, and leaders of the six geopolitical zones to address concerns raised in the aftermath of the NSAS protests. The Chief of Staff to the President and the Presidential Delegation had met with governors and leaders of the South-South Geopolitical Zone in Portacourt River State on Tuesday, November 24th. At the meeting, the South-South leaders demanded the restructuring of the country in line with the principle of true federalism, saying it will guarantee peace, security and stability in the country. Giving an update on the meeting on Channel's television Sunrise Daily program on Thursday, Wike said the President still has time to implement the will of the people and carve out a legacy for himself. At number five, the University of Lagos has again postponed its 2020-2021 post-UTME screening exercise indefinitely. This was contained in a press statement released by the university management on Thursday. The tertiary institution announced earlier that the screening exercise would hold between Monday, November 30th and Saturday, December 12th, 2020. The post-UTME was first littered for Wednesday, November 18th to Thursday, December 3rd, 2020 but was rescheduled to hold from November 30th to December 12, 2020. In the statement on Thursday, the university management said new dates would be communicated as soon as possible and apologized for any inconveniences occasioned by the postponement. At number four, the president of the African Development Bank, Akimumi Adeshino, has warned against misinformation about a former Nigerian head of state, Yakubu Gowon, stating that he is a man of integrity. Adeshino stated this in a tweet on Thursday after a British lawmaker, Tom Tujendat, accused Gowon of stealing half of Nigeria's central bank. The British lawmaker spoke on Monday during a parliamentary debate on a petition seeking that the United Kingdom government impose sanctions on Nigerian officials involved in the attack on peaceful protesters during the NSAS protests. 
In an interview with BBC, Gowon denied the accusation, describing it as rubbish. Also in reaction, Additional tweeted, Be careful of misinformation. General Yakubu Gowon, Nigeria's former head of state, is a man of great honor, decency, honesty, amazing simplicity, humility, and integrity. I know him, a great and admirable elder statesman of Nigeria. His honesty and integrity are impeccable. However, Nigerians reacted to his tweet attributing same features to renowned criminals like Lawrence Anini and Evans. At number three, the former Prime Minister of Sudan and top opposition figure, Sadiq Almadi, died of COVID-19 on Thursday. The death of the 84-year-old was announced by his party. Almadi was Sudan's last democratically elected Prime Minister before he was toppled in 1989 by now hosted President Omar al-Bashir in an Islamist-backed military coup. In a statement, the party offered condolences to the Sudanese people over his death. The country has so far recorded nearly 17,000 coronavirus cases, including more than 1,200 deaths. At number two, there was tight security around Kanu High Court on Thursday as the appeal hearing on two cases of blasphemy began. The cases set for hearing were those of 22-year-old musician Yahya Aminu Sharif, who was sentenced to death, and 13-year-old Umar Farouk, who was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. Yahya Sharif was convicted on a one-count charge of insulting the Holy Prophet Muhammad in a song he shared on WhatsApp on February 28, 2020, while Omar Farouk was sentenced to 10 years in prison in a Sharia court in Kano State after he was accused of using foul language towards Allah in an argument with a friend. Finally, at number one, Josephine Okereke, the wife of the newspaper vendor shot and killed by a DSS operative attached to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gbajabia Mila, has revealed that she's not in support of the 500 million naira compensation her husband's family is demanding from the Speaker. Josephine spoke at a press conference in Abuja on Thursday. The family of the victim, Ifa Inchuku Okereke, had through their lawyer, Mike Ozekome, written Gbajabia Mila on November 23, 2020, demanding 500 million naira. The widow, however, said she was not aware of the pre-litigation process, urging the speaker to ignore the family and fulfill his promises to her and her two children. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.